Hi guys, welcome to This Is Life. This is the entrepreneur episode and I'm excited to introduce Morenike. <laughs> is that the way you're going to say hi with a smile? Yes, hi. Hi everyone. Hi, my name is Morenike Malay yeah. um, and I'm the CEO of Ukantik, the Zentra Design Company. Chiamaka. Hi guys. <laughs> welcome Mark? to my channel. Hi guys, thanks for having me. Okay. Hi, 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 everyone. Emmanuel. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming to speak with me. So I'm just going to say this quote by Adam Osborne. He said, the most valuable thing you can make is a mistake. Mm. You can't learn from anything from being perfect. I think I agree. So my dad always says that um, whenever you make a mistake, that it's like you're not paying for an experience. So it's like... A valuable lesson. Mm. So you should always learn to not be afraid of your mistakes. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I agree with that. Yeah. I, I mean, for me, I've always strived to minimize the amount of mistakes that I make. <laughs> because I always, I try as much as possible to learn from life, learn from people. So when I see somebody make a mistake, I learn from it immediately and know that, oh, okay, there's a pitfall there. I'm not going to do that because it will lead me to, you know, this. But what about you? Okay. Okay. I would say Go that ahead. there's some mistakes that you can't avoid. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really in life and in business. You can't, you know, you, it's until you get in there. It's, an, it's your own experience. Yeah. Everybody's experience is different. So some, somebody might have made that kind of mistake, but you may have to make yours. So, yeah. um, so the key thing is to ensure that the mistake is not something that is maybe fatal. You know, you know, lives are not lost and things like that. But along the way, when you've made that mistake, then what did you learn? Mm -hmm. And how can you do it better the next time? So next time. mistakes are inevitable. I think I agree perfectly with her. Uh, and it's not just about making the mistakes. It's about learning from the mistakes because, uh, man, uh, madness is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So um, like, it, like she said, everybody's experience uh, is actually unique. So you might make a mistake and it was a mistake for you. I might do the same thing that you have done and, and it wasn't a mistake for yeah. me. So it works out for me. So I feel like everybody's experience is unique and you just have to live your life on your own terms and try to avoid like costly mistakes. I mean, make calculated, um, take calculated steps if you need to start a business, uh, look at people that have started it, look at the demography, look at their location. What can you learn from it before you can? Uh, before you take the step to make the same, um, uh, the same uh, to take the same step, uh, so that you won't make a costly mistake. I think that's just my own take on on the quote. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree. Uh, there's no no mistakes without learnings. Tomorrow is a new day. Yeah. You kind of uh, you end the day in a more positive way than you started, um, and uh, yeah, things get better. So, so how many people? Say, yeah, they are saying it's all. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. how many people have started here, have started a business and failed at it before? Before <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, tell me your experience, Marianne. So okay. Mine was, oh, so it's funny because mine was, it was supposed to be with a friend. So it was her own business. But because she doesn't live in Nigeria, she lives in the UK. Was it a partnership? Yes, yes. So I was supposed to be the one running. So because it was um, Ankara for, um, bags, Ankara slippers. So she had the idea, you know, she told me about it. And I was supposed to be running it from yeah. EAS here doing you know doing that going to the market so saying speaking to the local people that would make it let's just say that uh, <laughs> we ended up wearing it <laughs> 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 That's like if I would, you know, attribute it to my own business, or but it was b both of us, right? So we agreed that yes, <laughs> it can work. <laughs> it's not work, or it's not work, it's not work. I haven't really started a business that failed, but in my business, I failed many times. So let me just put it that way. Yes, I failed in this current business. Yes, I failed and you know, bounced back again, and I'm still doing it. Um, but that's that's yeah. Um, Deep. That's yes, yes, crazy yes, to hear because, yes, like, yes. we all know Social Prefect, the business, the mm -hmm. name is yes. very, very... And you started out in the um, 
tourism industry yeah, in way in Nigeria way way longer than a lot of other companies came yes, in and yes. you know you just felt like we could make money out of this or business out of this or let people have an experience so are you is it the pace pacemaker or the breakthrough curse because I hear that yeah, if you're the curse. yeah if you're the first <laughs> set of people to start yes yeah, yeah, first yeah, mover yeah, to yeah. start a no, business no, no, you no, can no. fall under the curse or have the advantage so yeah. what happened it's been both it's mm -hmm. been both yeah so we've had the advantage you know everybody's like I only trust the show prefectors because you know they've they started this and they've gone so far and they've yeah. done a lot of tours people yeah, trust them it. people yeah people have you know like good things to say about you know the tours that they've come on and then also there's like this being stuck Hmm. You know how, like, there are so many companies coming up now, even people who copied us, mm. or, like, <laughs> people who, you know, like, I'll just use that word, like, copied us, or, like, you know, uh, patterned after yeah. us, to you know, the way we do our business, model. to do the, ex yeah, the exact business model and everything. And it seems like they're doing way better, they're more innovative, you know, they come seems. up with, like, seems, yes, yeah. seems, yes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, they're more innovative and they're doing better and all that. But we've still been able to stand out and be creative. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said that, you know, I failed in this current business, mm -hmm. but I've been able to learn from, that's why I said mistakes are very valuable. Mm -hmm. Even recently, there was like a mistake that would have really broken us and, you know, like, you know, with one of our trips, like a Egypt trip, and it was crazy. And, you know, they had a lot to, you know, some people complained and all, but we still turned around on that same trip. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they had fun and mm -hmm. still came back with great experiences. And even one of the people who gave us like a feedback that you would think she would never, ever. And she's she's actually a big person in the country, you know. And you would think she would never, ever come on a trip with us again. Has given us another job right now. Wow. So I took the learnings from that trip, the feedback, the long feedback she gave us, <laughs> very long. <laughs> I took it and, you know, sometimes good feedback is really good, you know. Yeah. Even if it seems negative, yeah. you just learn from it. And, yeah. So yeah, that's what it seems like. Uh, absolutely. I, I agree with her. I think uh, conscientiousness is very important. Uh, like the person that gave you, uh, another opportunity now must have seen something you did to try to right the wrong yeah. uh, or things that went wrong and uh, like well, what business did you start uh, that day? Um, I mean I've started so many businesses <laughs> I'm a serial entrepreneur I and I've done so many different things with my life even before I became a photographer mm. I used to cook at some point mm. I used to play Scrabble oh. uh, I was at the World Championship for Scrabble wow. oh. can we give it a uh, round? <laughs> I mean, I was a computer programmer. Uh -huh. I, I used to design websites when I came to Lagos. That was the first job I got in Lagos. Uh -huh. uh, I used to, I mean, I used to work at so many different things. Now I'm into archery. I was into photography, but that's even the part of my like passion, not even business. So in, something about me is I, I've always, I've noticed so many things about me. Uh, number one, I'm a very individual person. Uh, not that I don't work too well with teams, but um, I, whenever I start something, I always like go, 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 go. I mean, I can stay up all night studying. But if I started with you, for instance, your own pace of development might not be the same pace that's at which I want to progress. Or my goal in, the, in starting the business might not be your own goal. And then there's a conflict there. And that's one of the things I've seen starting businesses with partners. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things I've learned from it because what they hope to get out of the business might not be what you're hoping to get out of, it, out of the business. Started a, a software company before we failed, not because I wasn't a good software developer, but just because we weren't aligned uh, on, on the goals. And I mean, I've started so many businesses, and like she has said, uh, I've learned from failures, even in the businesses, even in my photography business, uh, I fail a lot of times. And I mean, the failure is just controlled, but I learned from it. I'm like, okay, yes, so I won't do this again. Next time when this kind of clients come, this is what I will be able to do. If I can't deliver on something, I need to say I can't deliver on it and not be sentimental about it and want to say yes to everybody. So if you, if you need to say no, just say no and stick with it. Don't, I mean, so I, I, we learn every day and... Even still, I mean, we learn more from failure than uh, from our successes, actually, because when we succeed, we're comfortable. Yes. Uh, but when we fail, we need to, we want to do better. Mm -hmm. So I start businesses like every other day. Like <laughs> I started a business last year, and this year we're doing, I mean, we're doing thousands of dollars every month in, in business. What I mean, business is this? Um, so um, it's a business that serves photographers. So I paint and sell backdrops. So we sell backdrops all over the world. 
uh, even in Nigeria. We don't have a lot of sales in Nigeria, yeah. but we have a lot of rentals in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we, we created the rental model for Nigeria and then the sales model for, for exporting backdrops. So, I mean, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's really just my take on it. This is Live Podcast is sponsored by Enterprise Life Nigeria. You can follow them on social media at Enterprise Life Nigeria. is here with Enterprise Life Assurance. Our decades of experience in the West African markets will help you achieve your dreams with peace of mind. Visit www.myenterprisegroup.io forward slash ng or call 0700 Enterprise to know more. Enterprise Life, your advantage. <laughs> Failure, I think it depends what the objectives of the business were in the first place. Um, if you're, from my experience alone, um, my first registered business was um, while I was in full-time employment. So I didn't necessarily set out to say, okay, this is going to be my retirement project. It was more about learning and getting used to it. Um, and invariably, that was probably one of two or three businesses that I, I ran well being employed. So I don't think my entrepreneurship experience or journey started until probably this project and this business. And um, even now, I'd call myself a, a small business owner, perhaps, rather than a, an entrepreneur. But in terms of um, failure, um, every one of those businesses that may not have taken off, at least um, semi-failed or, or failed small in their own right, um, as opposed to being something that caused problems or because failure is such a, a negative word. It obviously comes across yeah, as yeah. what comes with that. But in general, they've all been learning. Okay. You have one of the... If I dare say, the biggest <laughs> events company in Nigeria, mm -hmm. Sapphire Events, and you are... The round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you run like five events a day, a weekend, you're like maybe on 10. <laughs> um, and you dance at every one of them. <laughs> I'm curious to know the business you started before this. That didn't work out. That didn't work out, right? No, actually, the business that I started was in events. So it wasn't just, a, it wasn't a business that was um, on its own. It was just a business. So, you know, in events, you can do many things. Mm -hmm. So I have multiple. If I, right now, I do, of course, we do the, we have the Decker company. We have the rental company. We have so many parts of the company. The what? Planning. Yes, mm -hmm. and the planning. So, so it was in one of it. So we, we had done a project where we thought I wanted to go into, you know, um, um, <laughs> you know, the way you're like, you know, she's like, ah, oh, in my mind. In my mind, in my mind, you understand? You know, so, you know, we're going to get like, you know, robes for the brides and have like t-shirts and, you know, things that they could wear in the morning. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, sometimes when you start something too early, the market isn't ready for it. Mm -hmm. that's, so the that's market, the yes, yeah, so the market wasn't ready for that at that time. Now, everyone does everyone it now. Yeah. And now we are not in that space. So we've left that space because it's not a, it's not a, you know, sometimes you also have to understand what you can succeed as in, in the business, right? You have to understand your own strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and look for the people, the right people and the right team. At that time, it was too early and it didn't work out. So mm -hmm. we just walked away and cut our losses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Chemaka, when you were speaking, you talked about, you know, other businesses um, taking your exact model, mm -hmm. building their own businesses of yours. And I'm like, you know what? At, this, at the same time, in business, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Because uh, principles, uh, business principles and success should be replicated. It, can, it should have a blueprint. Mm -hmm. That's to show that you're doing something right. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of billionaires now in Nigeria who are running businesses that we cannot replicate. We don't yes. know how to. Because mm -hmm. businesses... Principles should be universally yes. replicatable. Um, but you also said, um, you know, you talked about burnout. And, you know, maybe because you're here and a lot of people are all coming with, you know, innovative ways and, you know, you just feel stuck. How does an entrepreneur take their business or turn it around or bring something new? What do you, what's that process? What do you have to do to do something different with Zafai? And I know you've done, you've gone through so many processes like that. 
I like that question. Um, I mean, I've been doing this for 19 years. Mm-hmm. So, That's what I said. <laughs> so, you know, to still be relevant mm-hmm. and still be in the game where every new person is an event planner mm-hmm. every second. I mean, we even have a training school where we train mm-hmm. event planners. So I think the key thing is to understand why you are in business. Why are you doing what you're doing? What's the reason? And every single time that you need to always, you know when they say you have your goal, you have your vision, but you change your strategy. Mm -hmm. So you must constantly change your strategy. You must constantly understand that you can't do things the same way. You must be innovative. You must always want to be innovative every single time. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, the industry has changed like, if I want to look at the industry, I'm like, wow, 19 years ago, this was not where we were. But how do you still stay relevant? So you have to surround yourself with a good team, people that share your vision, people that want to constantly, you know, do better. So you must always want to do better. You must always want to say, where are we now? No, we're not doing it. We're not good enough. We must do better. Even if you think you're number one, what is the next step? What is the next vision? What is, do you want to go global? Do you want to do things, you know, with the trends, follow the trends? What do you want to do? So you just have to, it's very, it's, it's something that is very deep because you need to dig deep on the inside of you because sometimes you want to give up. You're like, ah, I'm tired. Look at what I'm doing. Ah, everybody, mm, everybody's an event. Mm. What do you have? So a strong team, great vision, change your strategy, rebrand, reinvent. Ah, reinvent. So even me, look at everybody. Almost everybody here is very young. I'm the almost like I would say I may be the oldest. Mark, I think I'm older than you as well. You're my, you're my sister's friend. But guess what? The key thing is that reinvention where I can still sit on the table with you guys and I'm still we're still relevant. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so again, so because I know um, sometimes, especially, in, you know, with Nigerian, with Nigerian space, <laughs> most times the CEO, the visionaire, is the one that always comes with you. You hardly find systems where it's, it's an employee that is saying, yo, I think we need to yes. go in this direction. This is where I'm yeah. thinking we, as a company, because everybody, nobody, very few people have the ownership mentality. Yeah. Even if you're working with somebody, you should see it as yours. Mm-hmm. Now, but so in creating those new strategies, what do you do? Do you take time out to travel? Do you, you know, is it a spa day or is it three days in a dark room? What is that process? Yes. Like? So it's a, it's a, it's a lot of process. It's long. Mm. So we, but we're always constantly thinking of how to do it differently. The key thing is you need to listen to your team. When you don't listen to them, they won't give you ideas anymore. So they come and say, oh, we need, I think we need to do this this way. I think we need to do it. Sometimes we go on breaks. Sometimes we, we have to go on holidays. Sometimes we go on retreats. But the key thing is there's constant training. There's constant teaching, learning, empowering, and then they have a voice. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times when your team don't have a voice, mm-hmm. they'll just be looking and be like, okay, what is ownership mentality? Mm-hmm. Maybe we're going to be here together. But when you carry them along, and I learned that more, especially even during the lockdown, where we had to carry everybody along. We say, you know what, we're in this together. Mm-hmm. I fail, you fail. We fail, we all will. So how do we come out of this? And everybody even came up with new ideas and new concepts that got us out of lockdown and even new businesses. So it's that... Putting, you know, like, oh, and then also thinking about how does your team work? How do they like to work? Some people don't like to talk. Some people like to write. Mm-hmm. What, what, what do they like? Find it and then go and just pull it out of them. Yeah. You know, so. I, I think I, I agree perfectly with what you said. And also, I'd like to add before I forget that um, number one, you've talked about digging deep. So I think self um, awareness yes. is very important. Like, we're not just starting something before because everybody is starting it. And then just going with the wind. That's the that's the thing. You need to uh, have a passion for it. Then what I will also say is have the mind of a baby. Um, so we we tend to, we tend to get carried away when we're professionals mm. uh, about things that we did when we started when the passion was young. Like um, when I started photography. Whenever I'm cooking, I'm always taking pictures of the spaghetti. When before I put it in the pot, then after I put it in the pot, when it's ready, I take a picture of it. Now, nobody got time for that. I mean, <laughs> I barely even cook. <laughs> Not now talk of uh, taking pictures of my food. I just want to eat and get out of the way and uh, get the next job done. So we tend to forget the things that we did when we were young. I mean, I used to carry cameras around everywhere. So you never know where the opportunity will come in from. Today, I didn't even carry the camera. I, I deliberately even leave cameras so that somebody won't come and say, ah, you have the camera. Take my... Do you understand? So... 
we, we need to keep that mind, the mind of a baby. Um, it keeps you curious, like, okay, what can you do better? How can I improve this? How can I get better? And I think that's one of the most important things that we need to uh, cultivate. Yeah. Okay, I agree with both of them very, very well. And one thing I'll add is you have to be customer-centric. Like, when you're customer-centric, like, you always listen to your clients. What do they want? Like, what's the market saying right now? First of all, you have to research. So research on, for example, in tourism. What are the new trends in tourism? What are customers, you know, like, where are they going to now? What are the new, basically, trends? Mm -hmm. And then always listen to your clients. Like, what are your clients saying? Like, what are the feedback you get? Like, I, I mentioned earlier about feedback that I got from clients, and it really helped. And now she's come back, even though there was, like, beginning a, a bad experience. But now she's come back because we listen to the feedback. And then also, just keep listening to your clients. You know, what, did, what are other companies doing as well? You also have to... Look at your competitors somehow. You know, don't pattern. There was one, I, I worked in a company and they were always too competitor focused. You know, when one does something, they want to do another thing. One has bought bus, they are buying a coaster. This one has bus, they bought a car, they are buying keke. No, not that. Don't always, you know, like be too, um, you know, focused on your, on your competitor. But also, you have to watch out what, what are they doing, you know, what's new in the market and all that. So I believe being customer-centric and also being focused on what your competitor is doing somehow, yeah, those two work. So I'll just add, you know, and it's based on what um, Antifunke had said about teams. Um, I noticed that um, there was a time a few months ago that I was just like, I think maybe they call it creative block, where I just couldn't move past a certain... Mm. Um, so, but I was thankful because of my team members, right? So... From the onset, we always carry um, team members along, such that they also brought. So I can tell you that maybe for like almost six months, most of the designs that you would see was not necessarily from my own head. It was from like you know combination of oh what do you think, what do you think, and I think that's like really important. There's one quote that I really like, which says that individuals play games, teams win championships. Mm -hmm. hey. So um, just having that like at the back of your mind, like it's like it just really just helps me, you know, to put perspective and, you know, with that. Very important. Yeah. Amit Kalantri said, entrepreneurship is not a theory. Mm. It is an experiment. Mm. And in Nigeria, <laughs> what, we've always, what we've always had is, you know, we've always had beaches. Mm. And Mark, why did you think we needed or we needed another one? So I think uh, we, what we needed was um, perhaps to take away a little bit of the stress of the beach experience um, and the ability to stay over safely, securely um, in, a, in, a, in a nice environment, being well taken care of. Um, and I think that's what we brought and what we decided was lacking. Uh, we had a couple of holidays, Millie and my wife and I, um, Turkey, Ibiza before we set up Jara and it was all, all inclusive experience and it just it just made sense. It's the ability to go not think about anything, leave your wallet at home and just indulge. Um, wow, I can come without my wallet? Exactly. Oh, you've got, oh you got to pay up front. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but once you're in the gate, that's it. We're, our staff are just focused on making sure you have the best time ever. Um, and on the basis of that, we have, uh, we've, yeah, we've created something that is relatively unique. There will still be beautiful beaches, other beach locations. But um, yeah, I think we're... we're Happy that we can see. You are indeed mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, so I think good, good, good. We're not from the food. So I went with my team. You did yeah, it. For Christmas, um, well, for our, um, end of year retreat, retreat, retreat. Yes, and we had Amazing. a blast. Amazing. A blast. Well, uh, yeah. Looking around the table, it's I think all four of these guys have been um, in some respect in the last. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I please. myself and my wife were um, planning and hoping on coming, but it was just fully booked. Like yeah. for like one day first, then yeah. then move to mm -hmm. you know, weekend. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, um, a rich investor. A lot. Well, a lot of rich investors say, "Don't start a business with your own money." Mm. How true? How practical is this? Um, and I also have found that you know the entrepreneurial experience abroad is different from the one here in Nigeria. Yeah. But you know, what do you think about that, Emmanuel? Uh, well, I think, like you've said, you rightly said, the experience there is different from the experience here. Um, here, I think it's a jungle. <laughs> um, rich investors will tell you that because they have leverage. What if you don't have leverage? What do you, I mean, you're starting from ground zero. Uh, then you just have to make it work. 
um, eventually when you're at some point, then you can now scale and say, okay, well, I'm getting a loan, I'm servicing this loan. I mean, it's, it's bank money. I mean, it's other people's money, but then it's, in, I mean, it's just some sort of investment too that you're making and you're paying a token on, on top of it. I mean, it's not, so um, at some, at, at different stages, I'll say different rules apply in this country because I mean, nobody will give you, no bank will give you money. <laughs> to, yeah. to do anything. Yeah. If you, I mean, and if you are looking at collecting people's money, just you need to have like a track record at least so that you know you're not creating um, a problem that you cannot solve for yourself bigger than what you're in already. So typically, I would say uh, if you have money that even if it's small, just start what you can start. Then when it grows, then you can scale with other people's money. But my advice, my experience, that's just it. This is Life Podcast is sponsored by Enterprise Life Nigeria. You can follow them on social media at Enterprise Life.